man. You've done some absolutely wonderful things. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm not sure if Kahar or Miss Shaw are going to be making it on to the actual meeting, which is perfectly okay. fine. Um, but I do want to go ahead and move forward. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Um, okay. Seeing the meeting is live, so I don't know. Hey, if the meeting is live, the meeting is live. That's great. Okay. So first and foremost, man, my name is Dennis. Of course, uh, I am the president of the DYKB nonprofit organization. Um, anybody that does get a chance to go ahead and tune in and check us out, man, thank you guys for showing support and showing you the love that you've shown uh, with us since we were established back in 2019, uh, in November, matter of fact. Um, shortly after that, of course, COVID-19 hit and all of our plans were put on hold for just uh, a moment. Uh, Mrs. Renee Boyce was actually one of the first volunteers that came into the organization along with Anna Chavez and Ms. Newman back in, I want to say, October of last year, if I'm not mistaken. Or, no, 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 no. I want to say uh, early September, I believe it was. Um, so she's been with us for virtually almost uh, a solid year. Um, she started off uh, being a social media assistant just with the whole entire group. I believe we had around like we built up to eight to ten social media assistants that were covering all three programs. And from there, we ended up dissecting everyone and kind of putting them into their own programs to work with and move ahead. She did that with us for another four or five months. Uh, and from there, she became an administrator. And since she's become an administrator for the reading program, she's done some amazing things. Please excuse the wind and the chimes. Uh, this is going to be the best location for me myself to be on the meeting today. Usually I am on the meetings at the end of the month. Um, but I did want to jump in here because Miss Boyce will be moving forward in life and in business and starting off on a new path beginning on the 25th and uh here at the dykb we wanted to just stop and just show appreciation and say thank you for everything that you've done for us miss boyce uh you've been a true inspiration not just for me myself um of course i know if miss chavez was here she would tell you how important that you've been with us or been for us uh since the beginning that that you've come as well um we look forward to seeing what you do in the future and we look forward to telling stories of the different things that you had to go through and how you overcame them to help strengthen our administrators and our volunteers in general in the future. Um, I do see that Ms. Shaw has jumped on, which is absolutely excellent. Um, so I'm just gonna take up a little bit, a bit of you guys' time and then I'm gonna hop off and let you guys go ahead and do what you guys normally do as far as for the meeting. Uh, we'll be speaking for probably about 10 minutes uh, and th that'll be it. I'll be on next week as uh, my regular time for the end of the month. So. First and foremost, I did want to highlight um, that each and every program, uh, the simple fact that you guys have been able to move forward in the times of being a virtual uh, uh, volunteer group is absolutely amazing. Um, I thank each and every one of you guys, as well as Kohar, that's not here right now for um, oops, seeing your way all the way through. Excuse me, the umbrella. For seeing your way all the way through. Um, we've had countless administrators come in and quit. Uh, just absolutely give up. Um, some right before their program was getting ready to launch and move forward, some in vital points of their programs, uh, leaving volunteers behind. But each person that's on the call right now or on this meeting right now, you guys are the ones that stuck it out. Uh, of course, Kahar's not here, but he's another one that stuck it out. You guys were able to take what I gave you as far as the vision that we have for whatever program, whether it be in the Kids Healthy Yum Yum Eating program, the reading program, or the youth debate team program and really take it to a level that I myself didn't see it being at. Um, some of the changes that, that, that each individual program may have wanted to put in place didn't get a chance to go into place. Um, some of the things that you wanted to accomplish may have not been accomplished, but they've been set in stone and put before us in order for us to show the next individual that comes into your program what to do and how to move forward and the kind of things that we expect from them. So we thank you guys greatly. Um, I want to start off. And none of these things that I'm saying are negatives. They're just there's something to enlighten myself as well as those that come in the future uh, to us on where we kind of dropped the ball, where we weren't able to hit the, the hit the different points or the goals that we wanted to hit and why. Uh, and it's going to be an educational situation for me myself, because at the end of the day, as being the leader, no matter what happens in the program, if something goes wrong, it's my responsibility. When something goes right, it's your reward. Um, and that's just the way that we do things here. So there's going to be times where I'm going to bring up things that may make people feel uncomfortable or may make it seem like I'm putting the ball in your court. But really, it's just me asking and, and trying to figure out and, and digging deeper. So I'm going to start off with the youth debate team. Uh, and these are just questions. You don't have to answer them all right now. Some of them you might just want to 
settle on or write down or, or check out the video later and respond next week or later on, however you want to do it, which is completely fine. But there's just some things that's on my mind that I'm trying to figure out why they went the way that they went or why they didn't go the way that, that um, I was envisioning them to go. Because uh, at the end of the day, all I can do is put a vision forward and then we got to kind of see how, how, how it works out. Uh, that's why I have you guys to go ahead and tailor it and uh, get it together, excuse me, and make it better. So first and foremost, I want to uh, highlight how uh, Ms. Shaw, you and Kahar came in right before the or uh, the first debate for our first seasonal debate for the youth debate team. And the time that you guys came in was roughly within seven to ten days before the debate, if not a little bit sooner. Um, so much has been going on, I haven't really locked down the date. But I know that it was literally right before we were supposed to go live. And the administrator, unfortunately, uh, had alerted me and let me know that they were going to have to step out, even though they did stay uh, for the actual live debate. But what was the biggest change or the biggest issue that you saw uh, moving from March up until now, as far as with uh, aligning the debates and getting the debates to go live? Because we have one coming up on the 28th. Um, and after that one, that's when we're going to kind of sit down. We're going to lick our wounds. We're going to really figure out. Um, what needs to be added, what needs to be subtracted, what direction we need to go in with different um, styles and different various ideas and whatnot and just really curtail everything to make the uh, second season of the youth debate a lot better. So we are wondering what things that you guys saw um, as far as being live and being a part of the groups that was um, a bit of a hassle or didn't work out the way that you expected it to work out or wasn't laid out the way you needed it to be laid out. The second thing would be... Um, what was the issue with getting the photos for the website sent in? Um, I know working with teenagers can definitely be um, a tricky situation. And I've had volunteers myself that outright refuse their photo to be released or, or sent in in order to uh, be a part of an announcement when we did live announcements for all of our new volunteers that were coming in on our social media channels. Some people didn't want their, their photo out there. And I used to tell them that, this photo is being used in order for us to show your work. People are going to want to know who is this individual that's doing this. They want to put a name with a face. It's not for us to sell any products. We don't sell any products. Um, it's not for us to gain any kind of gain off of your photo because, in all honesty, um, we're not set up to do that. Uh, and if we are and I'm just mistaken by that, then alert me and let me know. Um, but what was the, the main issue that individuals was giving you guys as far as not sending their photos in so we can get them up on the website in order to properly display the teams and who they were. Another question that we had was, um, since there was a, a breakdown in communication and we, we definitely see that, but since there was a breakdown in communication with the social media, um, as far as having posts developed for you, getting together content, what stopped us from, coming together and, and producing content meaning that when you guys first came in um due to me being unaware that the team at that time for the youth debate team that you guys were not a part of you guys just freshly came into had not produced any content for the live debate that was going to be in march and we ended up bringing together the reading program social media assistance as well as the kids healthy yum yum eating program and the organization uh social media assistance together into one group and producing content what was the biggest thing that was holding us back from doing that over the last three, four months uh, to produce content, not just for your video or your um, your program in a whole, but also for this upcoming debate? Um, if we can just better understand that did were was there not enough communication? Was there not enough groups on, on WhatsApp? Um, was there not a friendly enough atmosphere? Um, was that not something that was explained that was possible? Just just kind of break it down to us so we can make sure we learn from this situation and in the future as we move forward if we do have a social media assistant that breaks down in communication and is not able to produce what our administrator needs that we can figure out a way to go around that uh, without having to all meet at the meeting but have our administrators work together with one another in order to produce content because Miss Boyce and Miss Stewart uh, both of them they're, they're more than willing to, to land their people out but I want to make sure that they have been more than willing to land their people out. And if not, then it's something I need to address as well. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're having um, a little bit of unity and communication between everyone. Also, um, I believe that I had addressed this in the um, message I sent out today because I didn't know that originally the debate was focused on situations that were going on in Japan. 
Um, which struck me kind of funny. No, no, not. I mean, I have love for Japan now, but I'm just wondering how did Japan factor in with the debate? Like, what, where did that come from? And what was the reason behind it? Help me understand. So then, then I can stand up and tell everyone else, hey, listen, the reason why the debate is based on sexual assault that's going on in Japan and not in the U.S. or not as a whole around the world is because of X, Y, and Z. Um, but if we can do or keep everyone inclusive as much as we can uh, while staying within our mission statement, then let's do that. But if you guys could just elaborate on that, even if it was just a whim, something that was just thrown out there or just or maybe there's some facts. Maybe there's some critical facts that you know within the youth debate team that is like, hey, Mr. Stewart, um, you don't do debate. That's what you brought me in here for. And the reason why we were doing it and basing it off Japan is because of X, Y, and Z. Hit me with those facts. And if I'm not inviting or if I'm, I don't seem like the type of person that would be willing to listen to that, say that as well. Because uh, this is all about growing. And I want to make sure that we grow as individuals and the organization grows as, as a whole. Um, and as far as the youth debate team, uh, the last thing is that what are the main things that kids did not respond to? Meaning that I know the summer came up. I know that was tough. Um, having them send in their, their photos. What was their reasonings behind not wanting to? Or is this something they just didn't get around to? Um, the video editing and loading on YouTube, what happened with that part? Were kids, uh, or excuse me, were volunteers being assigned tasks and then not coming through with them? Because if that's the case, then we need to develop a system for us on the upper levels to come and assist you as the administrators and make sure we're contacting the parents. We're contacting the volunteer ourselves. We're speaking, we're reaching out to them, we're speaking to them. We're having Alejandro contact them or, or send out emails or we're building a different bridge of communication in order to find out, hey, what's going on? Do you have finals going on right now? Have things changed for you in life right now? Or, or, or did you get a job? All these things are realistic and they're things that we can work with and we can deal with. But we want to make sure that they're communicating. And if they're not responding to you, we want to make sure that we're responding to you so we can help get the response for you. Right. And um, so those are just the questions that I have for the for the youth debate team. Uh, like I said, as you guys prepare to after I leave the meeting, you guys can sit down and discuss those things or put together a response to those things or whatever it is um, and just kind of touch base at least next week on those topics in order for us to grow as a whole. All right, reading program. So I have a couple of questions for you as well, especially for this, for, since you are uh, pretty much on your way out, unfortunately, Miss Boyce. Um, but one of the things that, that I needed to know, because I want to make sure that this program succeeds as much as all the rest of the programs that we have and the ones that's coming in the future are, why didn't, um, why weren't you guys able to make the changes uh, within the program that you guys had suggested to us? Um, now, I'll be the first one to sit here and admit to you. I believe some of the messages I may have forwarded over to you uh, when I spoke to the volunteers underneath the youth or uh, the reading program. And a lot of times people will voice their opinion to me. And, and, and when they're given a microphone with me, they're able, they'll, they'll start breaking down exactly what they see is wrong and how it should be changed. But when they're in the middle of the fire, when they're in the meetings with you, the administrator, when they're given tasks by you, the administrator, they're not stepping up to the plate and doing it. I can't say that's what was happening or what was going on. So we're looking to dig a little deeper uh, because each and every volunteer seemed to have a plethora of different things that they would have done differently or things that they would have brought to the table or that they didn't understand. But with all that being said, having four to five months together as a group and those things never being brought up in that address, I'm trying to figure out where was the lack of communication. Um, I noticed that some were complaining or not complaining, but making statements saying that the meeting times maybe didn't work for everyone. And could you guys do RSVP uh, uh, type situation? And my, my personal response to that was that the meetings are recorded and you have uh, WhatsApp. So not only do you have the ability to view the meetings, and this is all the volunteers underneath you, not only do they have the ability to view the meetings, they have the ability to respond to them in a way to where everyone can see their response as far as leaving a video, right? And with that being understood, uh, I'm just not seeing why these options are not being taken because at the end of the day, every individual or volunteer outside of the kids that's under 18 that's joining our programs, all these individuals are either college students or above meaning that they're out of high school, um, of course, excluding the youth debate team, um, 
they have some form of training within the area that they're volunteering in, or this is what they're seeking to do on the next level or next stage in life. So um, whether they're already in college and, and they're learning, whether they've already been a part of other organizations, wherever they are, if they've been a part of different campaigns, they've learned a lot of different ways to communicate and put plans together and self-manage themselves in a way that's productive that when they come to the reading program and then they're not able to do those things, um, it kind of draws a red flag. And it doesn't draw a red flag with you with me. It draws a red flag with them. When I see um, the types of videos that were being created that didn't really expand on the actual um, standpoint of the program, they didn't enrich the program, they didn't really bring anything to the table and it's being done over a four week period or a month, and there's no one else on the video but one individual, but there's no changes, there's no growth. Um, we're sitting down and we're ha having the meetings. I'm even looking at some of the meetings, I'm looking at the conversations and, and these issues are being brought up, but I'm not seeing any growth. And I know that they're not being restricted as far as you telling them, hey, you can only make inspirational quotes this week and make them random. Or you can only go into the library and, and run through the books and pull out a book but make it random. Don't say anything like you're not putting restrictions on these individuals uh, from what I see is that you're giving them areas of growth. So just kind of enlighten me, which I know I talk long, long winded, but kind of enlighten me. Um, what were the issues that you were facing as being the administrator over them um, versus the responses that they were given? Um, because it would seem like we need we when I say we I'm talking about the board. We need to put together a more um supportive system for mm. our administrators um because at the end of the day when we have meetings like this every week it's seeming like all these tasks are on your heads but they're not these tasks are to given to you to be broke down to the rest of your volunteers now the youth debate team is going to be a little bit different but at the end of the day sorry that's an owl in the redwood tree uh, the youth debate team is going to be a little, a little bit different. For at the end of the day, um, the administrative um, layout, we had to change. We had went through three administrators that couldn't take the simple directions that we had gave them and put into effect. They kept wanting to change them and rearrange them around and didn't produce anything. Um, we brought in Kahar and we brought in Ms. Shaw. And for the first debate, they stuck directly to what we had already laid out. And they were able to put together a beautiful debate. Um, every person that responded or made a comment on the debate is still asking for when the next one's going to be. So I'm looking forward to at least there being some views on this debate as well as views after the debate, the debate is done. Because people were very interested. I myself was blown away at the work and, and the research that was put in to the different for to the topic in order to explain it in the different ways and, and, and gather uh, strength behind the arguments. And I thought it was a real blessing. I see in two to three years as we really get to uh, curtail this thing and, and, and strengthen it, it being a powerhouse program, something that really enlightens individuals uh, and, and, and brings them up to task. But I don't want to deviate. Uh, for the, our administrators, I want to make sure that I'm addressing the issues that you're having, uh, whether it's individuals not listening or a flow of communication. Maybe we need to use more than just WhatsApp. Maybe there needs to be some kind of check system put into effect. Um, or maybe the same way I do this uh, meeting with you guys, I need to sit down and do a meeting with each and every program uh, every week in order to reinforce the fact that the administrator is the one that's pulling the strings, what they say needs to go, and just make sure that you as an administrator are aware of what you need to do. Because some of these things that we're asking you to do, maybe you don't know how to do. I try to do things every day I don't know how to do, and it's a learning curve. So we understand it's going to be a learning curve with some things. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. The second thing, which I, I know that was a very long winded one. So I'm going to try to shorten it up. Uh, the second thing is that um, help me understand how when managing the people that were on your team. What, what type of communication was going on between the individuals, meaning that when a post was made, what was the system set in place? Was there one individual working on the graphics part, one individual working on uh, the, what the topic was going to be as far as for the picture or excuse me, not the picture, but the way that it was going to be worded or the age group it was going to be for, um, who was picking out the music, who, what was the layout, what was the strategy, how was it being put together in order to hit Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, what was the drawback of trying to do all those things, did you have to, is it better if you um, can simplify it 
Would it be better if it was stretched out on a month basis where everything was set out for uh, with one of those programs? I know uh, the VP already knows, but one of those programs where you can set all of your posts out and have them scheduled, schedule your posts out and have them scheduled for a full month. Is that better? Um, maybe changing the roles of each individual and the title instead of bringing in six social media assistants underneath you or five bring in one social media or somebody that volunteers for a social media assistant and then have three or four other positions underneath just the reading program, kind of like how we do for the kids Healthy the young eating program on volunteer match and with their roles clearly defined as far as editing, um, as far as um, graphics work, um, as far as someone who wants to be a spokesman, a spokesman or woman, as far as, I mean, doing the, the, the audio behind uh, the videos or, um, putting together a the same way we do the intro for the reading program, do something like that, like a 30 second intro per week for each book, meaning that we're displaying we're talking about the book. We're talking about the reader. We're talking about the moral of the story and we're talking about the activity as well and how it coincides with, with the book. What was the, the communication like as far as working with everyone? Was people working together? Were they not working together? Were people doing each other's tasks? Like basically what, what exactly was going on? Uh, what was the main thing holding you guys back from growing over a six month period, growing in readers? Uh, that was something that yeah, I myself, I tried to dip in and, and really help with. Um, we beat the streets. We, we created flyers. We contacted people. We put money behind it. We did all of those things. But a solution wasn't even be able to be found on my end. So um, maybe at, at, in hindsight, you'll, you'll see something that we could have done different in order to grow the amount of readers, not not viewers, but readers. Uh, what was the biggest thing that you would change as far as when it comes to the volunteers coming in? Do you feel that you needed younger volunteers? Uh oh. Do you feel like you, you needed um, older volunteers? Do you feel like you needed volunteers that were already um, had experience within that field or that role? Um, do you feel that volunteers should only be staying for a shorter amount of time due to how much people's uh, lives are changing, especially with everything with COVID and um, economically and everything else that's basically going on in, in, in our country? Do you think that a shorter amount of time would have been better? Um, also, what kind of reward system could we have put into effect in order to maybe make things better? Could we have ran some more competitions? Uh, could we have found some interesting ways to give away money, um, inspire our people, um, certificates, whatever it is. Um, and that's pretty much um, all the questions I have for the reading program. I know it was a lot, but I know that you'll be able to get back to me, Manny, and, and, and give us some great insight. All right, and last but not least, of course, the Kids Healthy Yum Yum Eating Program. Um, I just have a few things I want to touch on with you guys. And I know you guys are going to make some great changes and, and really kind of hone hone things in. So first and foremost, what I want to say about the Kids Healthy Yum Yum Meeting Program is we applaud you, first of all, the way that you guys have put together your team. Um, you guys are have the highest retention rate as far as volunteers. You guys have the greatest development as far as volunteers. Um, you guys have volunteers that have already left and have been seeking to come back and work for us. Um, so whatever you're doing over there, you're doing it right. The thing that I would say is that what's the mission goal for the program? Boy, this means killing me. What's the mission goal for the program? Meaning, what is the focus or what is the goal? Um, because what we see online right now are random quotes about random food items, um, quotes to make others feel better, are inspirational quotes, um, and a lot of sweet and delicious recipes. But it's the kids' healthy yum yum eating program. So we definitely want to see those healthy choices. Uh, we want to see the, the the healthy recipes that you guys have because we know you guys have 42 more recipes. Ten were put into the uh, sweet treats package for the ebook, but we're looking forward to see another four volumes of ebooks being produced with ten um, recipes per book. So we do want to get a time frame on that. Um, before we move out of the summer, as far as when are, when are we looking at putting those together? Uh, we want to get a time frame for the live reveals of the healthier choices um, because each program needs to grow in groups, meaning that the groups that are being accessed through social media 
Um, there's on Facebook, of course, we all know there's groups formulated in order for your information to get out to like-minded people that's in the same uh, lane that, 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 that you're in. And a lot of the healthy food choices are wide open for kids, guys. Uh, a lot of the healthy food choices. Um, I see them for adults left and right, but I don't see them for kids. And I know that this is an angle that once you guys properly hit it, it's going to be explosive for you guys. Um, we want to see the parent input. We want to see growth overall. Um, so I know that this is something that you guys have been working on passionately, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I addressed every program. Now that that's all been said, uh, Miss Renee Boyce, I know you don't have a lot of time as far as to respond for this next part I'm going to say. Um, but now I need to hear from you guys what you guys need to see differently from us. What is it that we're not doing that you guys need done? What do you need to see? What kind of growth do you need to see in order for us to be able to support you guys better? Um, what changes do you need to see uh, from me and my team? That's what I want to hear from you guys. And I want you to make it lengthy. I want you to spell it out because it's something that as we improve on the top side, the organization as a whole improves and we can support you guys better which in turn, when volunteers come in and the individuals that we're working with different communities, when, when they access the programs, they're growing at a higher rate. That's when the mission statement is really starting to take effect. When it's the kids on the ground, when it's the people on the ground that's seeing a positive uh, impact in their own lives from just tuning in, joining in, being a part of it. Uh, and the only way to do that is for us to get better. Um, so now that I've talked everyone's ears off for 26 minutes, uh, let me thank you guys again for joining into the meeting. I'm going to go ahead and hop out. Uh, our VP is going to finish off the meeting, and I want you guys to have a wonderful day. Uh, Miss Boyce, we are definitely going to put together a little package for you to say thank you to you, but I want you to know how much I appreciate you and uh, all the work that we definitely saw you you do. Um, youth debate team, we can't wait to see you guys debate. Um, I know you guys are going to blow it out the water, man. You guys made it through the summer and still retain the majority of the volunteers. We actually have two volunteers that's uh, wanting to interview for the next season already. Um, so that's going to be exciting. And kids, help the Yum Yum Media program. You guys are always dynamite. So uh, you guys have a wonderful night. And please finish off the meeting with uh, Ms. Dominique. Thank you.